Hey everyone, let's go ahead and take a look at free response number two. So here we are told um, the following cumulative relative frequency graph. So let me highlight that. When I hear relative frequency, I know I'm looking at percentages and cumulative means I've been accumulating or adding some kind of data together. But I've got a cumulative relative frequency plot that was constructed using data on uh, number of siblings. Here's my variable, my discrete numerical variable for each of 60 students in a Math 43 class. So this is my sample size right here. Right, that's supposed to be an arrow. I don't really think that looks too much like an arrow. Um, actually, that's so bad, I'm gonna go ahead and redraw the arrow. That looks a little bit better. Um, and, and here I can see um, I've got my variable number of siblings. It looks like my spread is zero to four. And I've got my cumulative percentages here. And, and we can see like for zero and 33%, you can see that over here on the graph. Right. And and for one and 83%, I can also see that over on the graph, right? So I could say something like 83% of students had one or fewer siblings. Right. I could say for here, this is 296. 96% of the students in this class had two or fewer siblings. And it does total out at one, which it should. Cumulative graphs should always go there. All right, so I'm going to erase some of my scribbles just because it tends to get pretty crowded here. Let's take a look at what they're asking us to do. It looks like they want us to complete this table. So two of the columns were given, right? I have them here. So I'll go ahead and put in my values of my variable, zero to four, and this cumulative relative frequency. Now there are a few ways to work backwards on this. And I say work backwards because usually we start with like the frequency column and fill them in left to right. But this time we're starting with relatives and we're gonna go backwards. So there's no one way to do this. There's actually a few ways you could say to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead, I'll, I'll do this one column at a time. And just for right now, let's go from cumulative relative to relative. All right, so let, let's try that. And again, you could have gone cumulative relative back to cumulative frequency. I'll do that in a moment, but I'm gonna go cumulative relative to relative. Because I see the word relative in both of these, they're still gonna have percentages or decimals. All right, we're not at whole numbers yet, which is fine. Now, usually if we had relative frequencies and we wanted to accumulate data, we would zigzag with adding. So we're gonna unzigzag with subtraction. So whenever you wanna go backwards, just use the opposite operation. So instead of adding, we're going to subtract. So what that would mean is I would start with my 33% here, right? I would have dragged that number over, but I'm going to subtract. And here's what I mean. So instead of looking at 33 and what I add to it to get to the, oh gosh, what was that? Oh, let me see if I can move that down. Hmm. Okay, there it is. Sorry about that. I hit a new button on my iPad. So what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at the difference between 83 and 33%. And that would have been 50%, and that's the number that's gonna go there. And then I wanna subtract 83 from 96. So if I think of 96 minus 83, that's gonna be 13%. That's gonna go here. 96 minus 96 is zero, and then one minus 96 is 0.04. And you can always check yourself, right? If you get through this process and you're like, well, did I do it correctly? Check if you went and you sent this over, right? 33 goes to 33 and then take 33 and add 50 to it. Well, what's 33 and 50? It's 83. What's 83 and 13? It's 96. What's 96 and zero? It's 96. What's 96 and four? It's one. So you can see that is working. You can go ahead and zigzag just to check yourself. Now let me erase my scribbles. Right, so that's one version of how you can get to that, that particular column. Now, let me go ahead and go cumulative relative frequency to cumulative frequency. Now, these should be whole numbers, right? And then I know it should total out to 60. That's what I know because that's how cumulatives work, right? This should total out to your sample size in the same way that the cumulative relative should total out to 100%. So how am I going to do that? Well, if you ever want to go from a relative frequency back to a frequency, you're gonna multiply by sample size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 33 and I'm gonna multiply it by my sample size of 60. And when you crunch that number, you get 19.8. But you can't have had 19.8 people. We've gotta round it. So this should actually be 20 people, all right? And so we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do it for 0.83. So I'm gonna take 0.83 and I'm gonna multiply that by 20, and that would give me, let me look at my calculator, 49.8. But again, we couldn't have 49.8 people with one or fewer siblings, it must have been 50, which is fine. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do 96 times 60. Oh, you know what? I think if I'm looking, I think I made a small little typo here. I think I wrote 20 right there. Let me change that to 60. That should be my sample size. All right. So anyways, if I go from, I swear on my calculator, I did 83 times 60. So let me on my calculator do 96% of 60, and that would be 57.6. But again, I'm going to round that up to 58. This would also be 58, and we know this has to total out to 60. All right. And then what I'm going to do, since I now have the cumulatives, I can do a couple of things. I can go from the cumulatives back to the frequencies by unzigzagging. Or if you want, you could go relative frequencies back to frequencies multiplying by sample size. So, so here's what I mean by that. Let me try it with the first method, and then we'll go with the second one. So if I unzigzagged, I'd put the 20 over here, right? I had 20 over here, and I put the 20 over here. And now let's subtract. So what is 50 minus 20? Well, that is 30. Right? And then I would do 58 minus 50, that would give me 8. 58 minus 58, 0. 60 minus 58, 2. Right? And there, if I, if I just did a quick check, 20 plus 30 is 50, 58, 58, 60. So this does total out to 60, which it should. All right, so that's one way. If I wanted to, I could get those. Now, let me erase some of my scribbles here. Let me be careful and see if I can erase that. And let me erase this column and show you a second way to do it. Because I also could have gone from relative frequencies over. All right, there's a couple of ways. So I could have taken 33% and multiplied it by sample size. All right, I would get 19.8, but I would round that to 20. Right? Or I could have now taken 50%. Right? And I could have multiplied it by sample size, and that would have given me 30. No need to round, so I just put 30. Right? You can do the same thing here. You can take 13%, multiply it by sample size, and let me crunch that on my calculator real quick. And we are looking at 7.8, which would give me the 8. I know this would be 0, and this would be 4% of 60, which I believe multiplies nicely to 2, and I get my 2. So either way, there you go. All right. So once I have all of those numbers, let's see what I'm being asked. It says, now construct a histogram to display the relative frequency. So I want this column, which is fine. I'm just going to go ahead now, and I'm going to have my variable on my x-axis. And this time I will have relative frequency on my y-axis, and I'll put some rectangles on it. So let's see what we got going on here. So let me see if I can keep all of this in view and make a little graph. All right. So I'm going to put my variable here. This is going to be number of siblings. All right, and it looks like my, my spread is going to be from a low. Let me use a different pen color so we can see this. A low of 0 to a high of 50. So I'm going to just scale my y-axis by 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That seems pretty good. And then this, I'm going to write this sideways. This would be relative frequency. Okay. So it looks like I'm going to do a rectangle at 0, something at 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right. So the first rectangle needs to be, and this isn't going to be perfect, but it needs to be about 33. Oh, gosh. If I Let me undo that. That is an iPad thing. So I'll make a sort of rectangle here, and then I'll stop touching that. All right, and then I'm going to go up to 50%, which is going to be here. And then I'm going to be at 13%, which is like here, and a 0, and then about 4%, which is here. Now, again, I like to label my heights. I always over-label things, especially when I draw by hand. It's not I'm not that precise. All right, and there were no siblings at three, which is fine. So there is my, my histogram. And if you wanted, you could go through, you know, you could do the socks on this, right? I can see this thing is skewed right. I'd have to actually go run um, the safety zone, right? If I wanted to do that, I'd have to find, I mean, for outliers, I'd have to find the IQR, which if you crunch on your calculator, the IQR is one. If you multiply it by one and a half, you're going to get 1.5. When you subtract it from 1.5 from Q1, you get uh, 0 minus 1.5 equaling negative 1.5. When you add it to Q3, 
you're going to have 1 plus 1.5, which gets you 2.5. And let me put a little bar here. So um, my safety zone is from negative 1.5 to 2.5. So we actually have some outliers here. Um, if, if three, if there were any um, students with three siblings, that would have been an outlier. But you can see four is, a, is an outlier. There's there's, that's not a number in the safety zone. So I would say there is an outlier of four siblings. And similarly, when I crunched this on my calculator, I found out the median was one sibling. And last but not least, I'm gonna just say the range is four siblings because I'm spread from zero to four. And if you're wondering how I got these stats, and when I say stats, let me color code this again. How did I get the IQR? Like, how did I know Q1, Q3, and the median? I, I quite literally put my variables in L1, my, my relative frequencies in L2. So I put this one in L1, this one in L2, and then I ran one of our stats, L1, L2. And that would give me all of my, my little stats there. All right, so thanks so much. That's number two.